That concludes the debate and the implications of the EU referendum for Scotland. It's now time to move on to the next item of business, which is a statement by John Swinney on a delivery plan for excellence and equity in education. The Deputy First Minister will take questions at the end of his statement, and there should therefore be no interventions or interruptions. I call on the Deputy First Minister, Mr Swinney, 10 minutes or thereabouts, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This is the last week of term for many schools across Scotland. It is the end of another year of hard work for teachers, parents, children and young people, and the start of a new journey for those young people as they embark on the next stage of their lives. And today marks the start of a new journey for Scottish education, a journey that will ensure we realise our ambition for excellence and equity for every child and young person in Scotland. In its review of Scottish education, the OECD found that achievement in Scottish schools is above the international average in reading and science, that attainment is improving, that Scotland's schools are inclusive, that our children are resilient and have positive attitudes towards school. These are strong foundations for Scottish education. They are a testament to the bold reform of Curriculum for Excellence and the energy applied by many to ensure success for Scotland's young people. The OEC also advised us to continue to be bold. Andy Hargreaves of the OECD review team set out the challenge at the Education Summit for us not only to remain ahead of the global curve in education, but actually become the curve that others will refer to around the world. He urged us to move from a culture of judgment to a system of judgment that delivers for every child and young person across our country. We must ensure that every child, no matter where they are from or how well off their family is, has the same opportunity and an equal chance to succeed. Presiding officer, I'm pleased to share a tangible and deliverable plan for delivering excellence and equity in Scottish education with Parliament today. The plan covers three themes. The first and overriding theme is our shared commitment right across Scottish education, from early learning and childcare, through school and in our colleges and universities, to close the attainment gap between children from the most and the least deprived backgrounds. The government will be relentless in our efforts to make this happen. For most children, our system already delivers. Our young people achieved record exam passes last year, and only last week, statistics show a new record in the percentage of young people leaving school for positive destinations. These same statistics also showed that we continue to make progress in narrowing the gap in attainment. But narrowing the gap is not the same as closing the gap, and good is not the same as great. Presiding officer, closing the attainment gap is not a choice, but an imperative to creating a fairer and a smarter Scotland. We will start with a programme to transform children's early education and ensure it links cohesively with when children start school. The focus on literacy in P1 to P3 will be designed to close the vocabulary gap and from September this year, school inspection and self-evaluation will focus more directly on progress to close that gap. From the new school year, funding for the challenge authorities and schools will double to £50 million and will be extended to secondary schools into the bargain. And we will work with these schools and communities to develop and implement programmes and activity to enable and encourage families' involvement in learning. We will encourage action in all schools through the increased investment announced today in the Innovation Fund and from 2017-18 through an additional £100 million that will be allocated directly to schools. In order to focus our efforts on closing the gap, we must first of all be able to identify precisely where the gap is. We will use the new data that will become available through the National Improvement Framework to identify the attainment gap in P1, P4, P7 and S3 and at school and at local authority level and agree targets to reduce this. We will focus our collective efforts where they are needed most and school inspection will focus more directly on closing that gap. The second theme of our plan is the need to ensure our curriculum, applauded by the OECD, can be delivered in a fashion that our teachers are free to teach and that our children have the opportunity to learn. We will put in place clear, simple statements that give teachers confidence about what Curriculum for Excellence does and does not expect of them. We will declutter the curriculum and will strip away anything that creates unnecessary workload for teachers and learners. I have instructed Education Scotland to prepare and publish a clear and concise statement of the basic framework within which teachers teach. This will be published in time for the new school session in August. 
Also by August, Education Scotland will provide clear practical advice on assessing achievement in literacy and numeracy, making clear the expected benchmarks for literacy and numeracy for each level of curriculum for excellence. By the end of the year, Education Scotland will provide similar advice on the achievement of curriculum levels in every curriculum area across broad general education. This will allow teachers to make sure their learners are on track and are developing the range of skills that they should be able to command. We will also significantly streamline the current range of guidance and related material on curriculum for excellence. And by January next year, a much simpler set of key resources will be available on the National Improvement Hub. We will carefully consider the ideas contributed by teacher associations and other partners in education and take forward a new programme of reducing workload in schools. I will directly oversee this activity and will test these proposals' effectiveness with a panel of teachers to ensure that their voice and experience informs what we take forward. I have instructed Her Majesty's inspectors to carry out a focused review of the demands placed on schools by each local authority in relation to Curriculum for Excellence and will receive their recommendations by mid-September. The SQA, Education Scotland, schools and local authorities must deliver the commitments made in the first report of the Assessment and National Qualifications Group. The SQA will be expected to deliver the actions to simplify and streamline qualifications set out in the 51 subject reports and consult on how best to streamline its course documentation for the national qualifications. I will meet the Chief Examiner for Scotland on a monthly basis to ensure the SQA is delivering its commitments. We will also reconvene the Assessment and National Qualifications Group, which I will chair, to further explore what more could be done to reduce workload associated with assessment and the new qualifications as quickly as possible. This work to declutter CFE is key to freeing up teachers' time to deliver the broad general education at the heart of our curriculum in a way which enables all children to benefit and to succeed. The third theme that, must that, that we focus on in the plan is the need to create the right structures to encourage and enable everyone to participate fully in school life, children and young people, parents, teachers and communities. Doing so represents the biggest opportunity to improve the outcomes and life chances of all children and young people. In September, I will launch a review of governance alongside the programme for government. It will explore all options and avenues to ensure that we create the right balance of autonomy and accountability in our education system. It will consider the changes needed to education to empower our teachers and schools, seek to devolve decision-making and funding to schools and communities, and support the development of school clusters and new educational regions. At the same time, we will develop proposals for a fair and transparent national funding formula to ensure that resources go where they are needed most. Schools are the building blocks of our education system, but that is not reflected in our legislation with responsibility for delivery and raising standards currently resting mainly with education authorities. We will introduce an education bill in the second year of this parliament to address this issue. Delivery of each of these themes requires leadership at all levels and by all involved in Scottish education. Teachers are key to our ambitions and investing in their skills, knowledge and indeed confidence will create the right culture of empowered leadership. So we will invest one and a half million pounds over the next three years to support up to 160 aspiring head teachers every year to benefit from the Interheadship programme and nearly one million pounds this year in master's level learning for teachers. We also need the right people with the right skills in the right places at the right time. So we will ensure that new teachers start their career confident in their ability to raise attainment in literacy and numeracy, as well as nurture children's health and well-being. We will expand distance learning initial teacher education models, develop a S Scottish master's programme that focuses on the vital transition phase between primary and secondary. And we will introduce a new route to encourage the highest quality graduates into priority areas and subjects. This delivery plan, presiding officer, sets out the actions this government will take over the course of this parliament to free up teachers to teach and empower our schools to deliver excellence and equity for all. The reforms that we plan are substantial and our ambition is clear. We will deliver on the basis of evidence whilst also being unafraid to innovate and find our own solutions. 
We will invest and seek to transform our education system. And at every step, we will engage, building on the Education Summit, which brought together key partners to share ideas for change by establishing a teachers panel and by putting in place the International Council of Education Advisors. Presiding officer, closing the attainment gap and raising standards for all, delivering excellence and equity for all of our children and young people must now be our shared national endeavour. This plan is focused on doing exactly that. Thank you very much. Deputy First Minister will now take questions on the issue raised in his statement. I intend to allow to 5.30 for questions, after which we must move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question were to press the request to speak buttons now. Short, sharp questions and short, sharp answers means everybody gets in. Ms Smith. Uh, thank you, and can I thank John Swinney for the prior sight of his statement. Uh, both he and the First Minister have been very clear in recent weeks uh, that equity is one of the principles that underlines everything that they are trying to do with education and I think that is a good sign. So I, can I keep my three questions to that principle of equity? In the first instance, could the Cabinet Secretary expand on exactly how he intends to disburse the funds which will be used to assist the most vulnerable pupils? Uh, in his answer to my parliamentary question last month on the 24th of May, he said that the details of that will be forthcoming in the next few weeks. Uh, but I don't actually see these details in this statement. Secondly, the Cabinet Secretary knows that there are many parents who are very anxious about the subject choice issue, the fact that different schools are not offering the same number of subjects, uh, National 5, and indeed that some key subjects are not actually being offered at all. And the Cabinet Secretary rightly uh, sounded very concerned about that at education questions, so I wonder if you could tell Parliament what he intends to do to address that. And thirdly, could I ask uh, the Cabinet Secretary that he rightly says in his statement that the early years are absolutely crucial. So can I ask again where the equity lies when half of Scotland's young children do not actually have the same level of nursery entitlement as do others? Does he intend to change that? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, in relation to the three points that uh, Liz Smith has asked me, on the question in relation to the distribution of funds, um, the Government has already made allocations in relation to the support for um, uh, local authorities and for schools driven by assessments of uh, levels of deprivation. And uh, my objective is to make sure that as we roll out the further stages of the attainment fund, that we ensure that uh, the funding reaches um, the areas of the country where we see the existence of deprivation and that we are able to tackle that directly by the investment that the government makes. In relation to a second point on uh, subject choice, in a sense uh, th th this question gets to the heart of um, decision making within individual schools because um, the, the, the choices that um, I think are arrived at on this question are largely arrived at at individual schools and I know that Liz Smith is a is a supporter of individual schools being able to take their own decisions. So I think the, um, the, 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 there's a fine balance to be struck and I am wrestling with this question on a constant basis on all of my judgments about education, about the extent to which uh, I should set out as the Education Secretary what I think should happen or whether I should leave that to the professional judgment of educationalists in every part of the country. Because I, I do point out uh, respectfully to, to Liz Smith that there is a contradiction in the argument of complaining about the availability and range of subject choices arrived at by individual schools uh, and then demanding that schools be empowered to take these decisions. Uh, so I will, I'm still reflecting on that issue because I am determined uh, to make sure that young people are able to have um, a broad range of choices to enable them to fulfil their own potential. And then finally, on the issue of early years, um, I, the government is making provision um, for the entitlement of young people to have access to the, um, the, the hours of early years education that, um, that, that we have committed to. That is, the, that, that is the commitment of the government to 600 hours. That is being provided for in the local authority finance settlement. Obviously, if individuals are not gaining access to that entitlement, that is an issue that the government has to address. And as we look at the expansion of early years education, um, uh, my priority is to make sure that that is provided in a way that addresses the needs of 
families around the country to ensure that every young person that has that entitlement is able to get that entitlement. And those judgments will be at the heart of the delivery mechanism and the models that are taken forward by the early years minister and myself. Thank you, Ian Gray, to be followed by Jenny Gilruth. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and thank you to the uh, Deputy First Minister for advance sight of his statement. He knows that we share its ambition, excellence and equity in Scottish education. And there are indeed things to welcome here, such as listening to teachers on the need to declutter, and an acceptance, I think, that government has not yet listened enough to teachers with regard to reducing uh, workload. There are other things here which remain somewhat ambiguous, however. For example, uh, can the Deputy First Minister explicitly promise that any new route into teaching will not compromise the all-graduate, fully professionally qualified and registered teaching force which has served us so well for so long? But the thing that we really need to hear is, of course, absent. There is no commitment here to protect education budgets. The £150 million uh, attainment funding from 2017-18 has to be set against the £500 million taken from local authority budgets this year alone, with worse presumably to follow. We could believe so much more in all of the promises of this delivery plan if the Deputy First Minister would just commit to protecting education budgets. Will he do that? Cabinet Secretary. First of all, can I welcome the recognition from Ian Gray about the government's agenda on um, uh, addressing the workload of the teaching profession uh, and on decluttering the curriculum. I have a very clear motivation in addressing that. It is to enable teachers to be liberated from the unnecessary bureaucracy that has grown up over the years, of which there have been uh, commendable attempts to try to address that, but they've not been carried through, in my opinion, um, fully on the ground, which is why I've asked Her Majesty's <coughs> Inspectorate to assess the degree to which the bureaucratic burdens that were asked to be removed by the Tackling Bureaucracy Report have, in fact, been removed by local authorities because uh, I want to be persuaded that uh, that action has, in fact, taken its course. Um, so there will be a further programme to uh, undertake that with the express purpose of enabling the teaching profession to be able to concentrate on learning, which will be these, one of the most significant contributors we can have to uh, improving attainment within our schools and in tackling the attainment gap by liberating the teaching profession to concentrate on teaching. In relation to his two specific points on the issue of the um, the registered uh, teaching profession, I, I, I simply say to Mr Gray, we'll look at inventive and innovative ways to enable individuals to enter the teaching profession. And I would have thought that would be something that he would support, given the fact that he's not at the back of the queue when complaining about teacher shortages um, within Scotland. Uh, and we will deploy innovation and flexibility, but there is no point in putting teachers into the classroom if they are not of sufficient quality to be able to deliver the teaching that we expect of them. So the importance of quality registration is absolutely fundamental uh, to this process. But we should not be, we should not allow that commitment to in any way um, blinker us from contemplating innovation about how we uh, encourage and motivate individuals into the teaching profession and to secure uh, those routes. Um, in his real, uh, point about finance, um, you, you must, you know, it's not for the first time that Mr Gray and I um, take different views about public finances. Um, local authority budgets were not reduced by £500 million in, in, in this financial year. Mr Gray knows full well that some of, the, some of that sum of money that he talks about is in capital budgets that will be invested in local authorities in later years. And I, and I went through ad nauseum about these points before the election with Mr Gray and we have had the elections, so we've aired all these issues and uh, they, they, they've been considered by the public. What I would hope Mr Gray would acknowledge from the delivery plan is the very significant funding that the government is putting in place through the Scottish Attainment Challenge to support the investment in education in Scotland. That is a very substantial investment in education for our young people in Scotland and I would have thought Mr Gray would have supported us in the investment that we're making. Thank you. Can I say I have 11 members wanted to ask questions, so I repeat, can we have short, sharp questions? And may I also say short, sharp answers? Uh, I call Jenny Gilruth to be followed by Ross Thompson. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, can I begin by putting on record that the First Minister has appointed me as the Parliamentary Liaison Officer for Education, and I look forward to working with colleagues across the Chamber in this capacity. To ask the Cabinet Secretary what steps are being taken by the Scottish Government to ensure that local authorities are working to tackle unnecessary bureaucracy in schools. Um, Cabinet officer, Secretary. Uh, President officer, the, the, one of the comments I made to Mr Gray was that the, there had been some good work in formulating plans to reduce bureaucracy and workload, um, particularly by the Tackling Bureaucracy report, which was um, produced in 2013. Um, I have asked uh, HMI to, uh, to look into the degree to which the recommendations of that report and other uh, examples of activity to reduce the administrative and bureaucratic burdens on, uh, that are placed on schools by local authorities have in fact been translated into practice. Um, that is um, one example of how I intend to do it. There will be inspections undertaken of all local authorities um, once the, uh, the, the new term commences and I will be in receipt of the recommendations of that process by mid-September. Uh, that is not to single out local authorities. Um, I recognise that Education Scotland and SQA have got to contribute to this process of reducing workload and administrative burden, and I will make sure they do so likewise. Uh, thank you, Ross Thompson. We followed by James Dornan. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. On page three of the Cabinet Secretary's statement, uh, third paragraph on the bottom, required changes to empower teachers and to devolve powers are cited. So can the Cabinet Secretary tell the Chamber what aspects within the current system does he feel are limiting the autonomy and also the accountability of teachers in schools and therefore need to be changed? Cabinet Secretary. What I want to make sure is that teachers are um, free to make the professional judgment uh, that we rely upon them about the educational progress of young people within our schools. And um, I want to make sure that um, we, we have in place proper accountability to make sure that we can assess the progress that young people can make, but I don't want that bureaucracy to be uh, intrusive on the teaching capability and the teaching performance that we depend upon. And I think, frankly, um, that is out of kilter just now. Uh, I think the, um, what is required of teachers in terms of reporting um, and monitoring of performance um, in some parts of the school curriculum is, uh, is duplicative. Um, that needs to be stripped out and we need to be able to see and have clear line of sight about the progress that young people are making through their education system. We need to know that once, we need to know it authoritatively, we don't need to know it multiple times and unauthoritatively, if that's a word. Um, so um, we, that's what I'm focused on creating. That's what the, the delivery plan is aiming to achieve, to give us that assessment of the progress that young people are making, but giving it to us in an authoritative way that's informed by teacher judgment. James Dornard, followed by Monica Lennon. Thank you, President Officer. I, I welcome the review of governance announced and look forward to the Education and Skills Committee playing its part in this. In terms of review of governance proposals to develop school clusters and our ambitions to empower teachers in schools, could the Cabinet Secretary outline what evidence can we learn from within Scotland and beyond? Cabinet Secretary. Hey, First of all, can I say that I look forward very much to um, uh, working with uh, Mr Donan as the Chair of the Education Committee and indeed we will have our first encounter tomorrow morning, uh, which, to which I am looking forward. Um, th there will be a range of, and, and I very happy to engage constructively with the committee in informing this agenda. I've committed myself in this process to uh, engagement. The Education Summit, I think, was a very valuable and worthwhile exchange of views. And of course, within that summit, we heard a range of international experience and input, uh, which has been of benefit in formulating our views. And I will draw on that as we come to our conclusions around the conduct of the governance review, which I will uh, consult extensively about with local authorities, with the professional associations, with parents and with young people in Scotland. Thank you, Monica Lennon. We're followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The appetite for new structures signals a reduced role for councils in the delivery of education, and I draw attention to my register of interest as an elected member in South Lanarkshire Council. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if the public can expect the school's version of Police Scotland, or is the Scottish Government more attracted to the model being promoted by organisations like the, the Hometown Foundation? 
What I, can say to, um, what I can say to Monica Lennon is that, um, the, and, and, and we set it out within the document, the government believes in, um, a, in a public education system, we believe in a mutual education system that operates in the interests of members of the public. So we will formulate a model that is appropriate to the needs of Scotland, one that results in the empowerment of schools and head teachers enables greater decision-making to be undertaken within the school to adjust to particular circumstances. Why do I think that's important? I think it's important because from the evidence that I've seen around the country, um, where schools are able to take particular decisions that meet the needs of young people in their locality, they are able to more actively and effectively um, take decisions that are correct for individual children. And that's what's running through all of our approach to education the requirement to get it right for every child in Scotland. And uh, obviously, we will discuss more widely uh, with Parliament, with the committee and with wider uh, stakeholders in this debate uh, the details of how that will be taken forward. Thank you. I call Stuart McMillan to be followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I welcome the statement from the Cabinet Secretary today, but uh, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware that uh, we need to encourage more men into early years and general teaching, uh, more teachers from the BME backgrounds, and also more women into leadership positions. Uh, how will he endeavour to improve the diversity of our teaching profession? Cabinet Secretary. We have to make sure that um, we, we do broaden uh, recruitment into the professions and uh, the, the, the question of diversity within the education profession is a very significant issue. Um, we will see that at different areas. I answered a parliamentary question last week which showed um, a, 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 a significant level of um, under-representation of women in senior educational professional roles. Uh, so this is a, a question which uh, I will take forward with the General Teaching Council of Scotland and take forward my wider discussions around the development of the profession to make sure that we have a more representative teaching profession able to meet the needs of all sectors uh, within the country. Alison Johnson. Um, thank you. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of his statement. Positive destinations for young people with additional support needs remain below the rate for those without additional support needs. So will the Cabinet Secretary consider making support for learning a promoted post as part of the drive to reduce the attainment gap? Because this would help tackle inequality of outcomes for pupils with additional support needs and it would also enable progression for the most skilled teachers who want to remain in our classrooms. Cabinet Secretary. The, the, the key point in, in, in responding to Alison Johnson's question is the importance of ensuring that every child is able to receive, every young person is able to receive the appropriate educational support and service that meets their requirements. So if they have additional support needs, the importance is that those additional support needs are respected. What I think is becoming increasingly clear um, in the secondary sector is good work that's been undertaken to align the thinking behind the Developing Scotland's Young Workforce Report to the work of schools. And that's better meeting the needs of young people with additional support needs. We need to make sure that thinking is reflected right throughout the education system. So rather than giving a specific commitment to the point that Alison Johnson has made today, can I give the, the, the general response that the government is focused on trying to ensure that every young person receives the educational support and, uh, and assistance that they require to meet their needs and that on that basis there is a greater chance of fulfilling their outcome, the better outcomes uh, and their expectations. Tavish Scott to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the courtesy of his statement uh, in advance. Um, could he clarify how reducing ex the excessive workload on teachers that he's already mentioned uh, can happen when he has described national assessments to be measured by his government uh, on pupils in P1, P4, P7 and indeed S3? And can he confirm whether the national levels pupils will be expected to pass for literacy and numeracy through school will be based on teacher judgments? Cabinet Secretary. On, on the first point, uh, lo almost all local authorities already undertake some form of testing system through its schools. But the challenge that we have, or the difficulty we have, is the data is not comparable to, to enable us to assess relative performance and therefore to tackle improvements in performance where that is required. So I'm not um, 
in any way suggesting an increase in the, 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 the workload on teachers. I am talking about replacing a testing and, and assessment system that is in place within individual schools already. On his second point, um, it is important that uh, as we uh, take forward the, um, the, 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 the assessment approach that we acknowledge that we are um, relying on teacher judgment to be informed by the outcome of testing, uh, testing and assessment. So ultimately we will be dependent on teacher judgment. That is the foundation of curriculum for excellence, but we want that to be better informed by the conclusions of the assessment process. Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary ensure that the investment and focus in closing the attainment gap also delivers for a looked after and accommodated young people? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, Mr McGregor makes an important point because, uh, and, uh, as the data all demonstrates to us, uh, looked after children are uh, the young people who have the greatest challenge in securing good outcomes. Um, it is therefore an essential focus of the attainment challenge to address that point and to ensure that we meet the needs of those young people and to address and to deliver better outcomes for them. Uh, that will lie at the heart of the delivery of the attainment challenge and of course uh, the government will monitor and assess the progress that is made uh, as we take forward the improvements as part of the attainment challenge. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary? Apologies to the three members I wasn't able to uh, take. Uh, the next item of business is consideration of a parliamentary bureau motion. I would ask Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 585 on substitution of committees. Formally moved. And the question on this motion will be put at decision time, to which we now come. And there are three questions to be put as a result of today's business. The first question is that amendment 601.1 in the name of Ruth Davidson, which seeks to amend motion 601, the name of Nicola Sturgeon, on the implications of the EU referendum for Scotland be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. Uh, members will now move to a vote. And members should cast their votes now. The result of the vote on Amendment 601.1 is as follows. Yes, 34. No, 68. There were 21 abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. The next question is that Amendment 601, in the name of Nicola Sturgeon, on the implications of the EU referendum for Scotland be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. We will move to a vote, and members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote on motion 601 in the name of Nicola Sturgeon is as follows. Yes, 92. No, 0. And there were 31 abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed. The next question is that motion 585 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on the substitution on committees be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. That concludes decision time. We will now move to members business. And I will give a short pause to allow members to change places.